Yeah. Hey, what's up, people? DJ Chris G once again hitting you with this um, straight from the underground 2.0 uh, podcast interview. Doing it live right here for the Instagram followers, of course. And um, yo, uh, I see Pablo Brown Beats is in the house. Solo for Dolo, what's up? Solo for Dolo, uh, you hunt usually um, flip the script radio. First time I think I seen you in. In my chat, that's dope, you know. Chat to Flip Script Radio, anyway. And I see Zaz is already there already. Uh, Zaz, all you have to do is basically jo- uh, see if you could join the video. Or maybe I can get you to join the video. Let me see if I can get you in here. Here we go. Jump into the video. And we can pretty much almost start. Pyramids crew, what's up, man? Yo, what's up, um, people? Um, I got your, I got your new single the other day, Curtis. See, what's going on, man? Uh, what's up, Zaz? What's going on? I got you. Having it, brother. How you feeling? So, I'll get with you in just a second. Um, Pyramids crew, I was just um shouting to you guys. I played your new joint last night on the show. In fact, the show we ran earlier on SFTU Five Eight Five Radio this morning so you know you can check it out there as well zaz what's up man what's going on oh, how you feeling man let me, let me let me give you a proper interview uh let me give you a proper type uh intro first before we jump into it because i'm gonna re- I'm, this is being recorded right now but i'm gonna really do it, the intro later on when i do the podcast when i put the podcast together um let's see coming up right here on the podcast. We got another podcast right here. Coming up on the podcast, um, he's virtually not new to the game. He's been around for a while now. And he sent me, in fact, we're going to discuss it. We're going to talk about this new um, mixtape he has with DJ Glib Styles, which basically covers his 20-year career. And um, even though you may have started hearing him on SFTU 585 Radio within the last year, um, he's got a couple of joints. We're going to be talking about that too. This dude's been a, is defining hip hop. He's been around for quite some time. In fact, he happens to do the same thing I'm doing right now on SFT Five Five Radio. He has his own station called For the DJs Radio, and is already picking up steam already. I, I already, let's just say this: one of my boys, DJ Jazzy, what from um from SFTU 55 Radio from the Ease Up show is already joined up with him. So he gets played on that show too as well. Uh, you know, Jazzy's always entrepreneur. He's always trying to join up with somebody. So he's on that station too as well. Hell, I might even join shit. <laughs> More than welcome, yeah, my brother. Yeah, 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 let me present to you guys the CEO artist of um, Four Dads for the DJs Radio. Zaz is in the house. What's up, Zaz? What's going on, beloved? How you feeling, man? I appreciate you for real, man. man. What's going on, man? Hey, I appreciate you as well. You said you wanted to kick it on my platform, so we're gonna kick it on our my platform. So what's up? Yes, what's going yes. on? Let me, let me first say, you know, I appreciate everything you do. I've been watching you for for some years now, mm. and I love what you're doing. You know, and actually, you know, you're one of the people that inspired me, and because of the because of what mm. you do. And what other DJs do, I decided to do this platform, you know, for the DJs radio. And um, like I told you in the conversation we had on the phone, man, you were part of that as well, my brother. Mm. Any DJ out there, you guys are part of the For the DJs Radio Nation, man, for real. So I appreciate everything you do for us, man. All right, but before we get into all the, you know, the whole um, For the DJs Radio, let's talk more about you yourself as an artist and how you started as an artist. How long, you, what's going on with this journey? how you transition from being just a, a, a independent artist from back in the day to the independent artist you are now and the difference between that so let's let's start with how you started how'd you get into this whole thing so pretty much man it all started with you know buying records from this place called bates on the Lancy street in manhattan the Lancy you know, street <laughs> the street you know i used to go to bates and i used to get you know Whenever my parents would give me a couple of dollars, you know, I would go get that vinyl. And then um, I started asking for a radio, man. So I've really been recording since since back in the day with the radio, just with the radio. Wow. And then, and 
then I started recording, you know, on like four tracks and whatnot. And then I became better and better. And now, you know, doing it on another level now where I'm actually mixing my own stuff now too. So, and mastering my own stuff. So, you know, it's been, it's been a long time, man, a long time coming. So I just kept with it, man, and dibbled and dabbled. And then life got in the way. And then, you know, in the back of the head, I was still like, you know, I'm gonna still do it. So I always kept doing it. And then now it's like, I put the producer thing down too. So I'm just focusing on the ramen, and I'm glad I did, man, because now there's a lot of people that want to work with me now, you know what I'm saying? I really appreciate that, you know? But actually, looking at the mixtape you have with DJ Glib Styles, it pretty much covers your 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 journey in the hip-hop, and it's pretty damn impressive. I mean, you sent it to me the other day, and I was super impressed with this. This, this was like a great collage of talent. Um, Oh, oh, hold on, let me show you. I'm trying to see if I can put it up right now. But yo, you have had some great features on here, man. I mean, you work with everybody I know. <laughs> Nezma, <laughs> Jamil Honesty. Uh, yes. got, let's see, I think you got a track on here with, let's see. I'm trying to see if I can get this up here. Napoleon the Legend. Uh, shoot. Truck North. From the roots, yeah, all right? Yeah, yeah. Um, Shout out Truck North, Bob, man. That's one of my guys. Of course, you know, you got track with Fat Father, of course. Um, and the Vet B, Do Wild, yeah. Boda. Yeah. <laughs> man, this is like mad people out here. That's just, you know, G Casino. It's mad people out here that, you know, we play on the show that we've been playing on the show and it's like wow your influence is big and spreading and i heard your com you know shout out to nesman nefertiti who put me on to you a couple months way before like a year ago when she sent me the combined thoughts album oh yeah yo and that was flavor i was like yo how can we and then next you know sh um shout out to my man dj showtime he was like yo you there's this dude here in new york you should really hear man i don't think you've heard of him and he sent me um he sent me the boom bat blocks joint <laughs> he's like yo you got to be playing this on the show chris you you have to start playing i was like i already i'm familiar with the artist already and i just didn't have that track and basically that was that was that was our like introduction more or less you know you started noticing i think you started following me around that point and yeah yeah man so you may have known of me but you you didn't start following yeah. me until I started really hitting that record off. So it was like, wow, okay, that's dope. Yeah, man. But I've been following the podcast, you know, like I seen the podcast mm -hmm. on, on certain platforms. Cause when you're doing your when you're doing your own podcast, they actually like they refer to other ones. Mm -hmm. So I've always seen S, you know, from from you know, straight straight from the underground, S T F U and I'm like, what's that? What's that? so I'll listen here and there, but mm -hmm. I was never like in tune with it but then when you started coming up as chris i was like oh man that's that's the guy from that podcast so and then the radio station so i was like wow this guy's really doing his thing man yeah, you've been doing it for years you've been doing it for years yeah, though I, I started the podcast sometime way back in 2010 this is before anybody else came anybody else really came out i think me um soon as and a couple other people were the only people that was actually doing hip-hop podcasts but i wasn't known Cause I'm from Rochester, New York. I don't, I don't know about any place else. I didn't have the plug with New York, or, or I didn't have the plug with LA. I'm not a famous actor. I, I, I haven't been in any movies. <laughs> I don't have no TV show or nothing like that. So I was just coming up as a DJ, playing records and interviewing people on my show, and people started noticing it. You know, so to me, it's always been me doing my old radio show, my old college radio show doing the podcast that's what basically what it was me doing internet radio but in a podcast form long before anybody else did it so thanks a lot for noticing brother i appreciate that yeah man that's that's you gotta show love to that man because a lot of people don't know man it's a lot of time that goes into these shows man you know <laughs> I mean, if they would see the time that's put into these shows they'll respect the souls a little bit you know a little bit more you know what i'm saying oh, hell yeah I, I think maybe they would maybe they wouldn't you know people they digest it differently and all this. Yeah. But yeah, going man. back to you, all right? Now, 
like I said, you've been doing your thing for a while. How hard has it been to transition from now? See, you came up during when people were still pressing stuff up on vinyl. And see, as far as I know, have you ever been signed to any labels or anything like that? I was close to signing with a few labels, but I never, you know, is I always say go with your heart. So when they don't seem right, you know what I mean? You 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 get out of there, you know? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I didn't want to be seen as like just a Latino rapper. You know what I mean? I want to be known as an artist because mm -hmm. an artist does, does everything, right? So, you know, they were always trying to put me, put me in the box. Latino rapper this, Latino rapper that. You know, I get it. But at the end of the day, we all artists at the end of the day. Don't say when you put your name out there and, and, and you go on platforms, it don't say uh, Latino rapper guys. You know, it don't say, you know, Afro-American. Whoever it is, you know what I'm saying? It don't say that. It just says your name. You know yeah. what I mean? So I always want I always represented that and I felt like let the music speak for itself, you know what I mean? And that that's about it, man. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, um let's see, like I said, you came up during the time where everybody there was a line that um one of the dudes from Souls of Mischief said. He said, If you're so dope, why aren't you signed yet? Way back in the day, right? So it seemed like back in the day, back during the nineties, if you wasn't signed a lot of people didn't look at you as like, you know, really accomplished. But coming up during the 90s, I also there was records out there from MCs that, that wasn't signed to a major label. You were independent, so you were pressing vinyl back then. You know, like like you mentioned, like you got a collaboration with Duop. Duop, as far as I know, was never signed to any label. He always pressed his video, his stuff up himself and sent it yeah. up, you know. Um, there's a couple of Latina rap, um, Latina rappers that was doing the same thing. All of them couldn't be big pun or even um, my man Chino Excel. You know, he he was signed for a second and then he went independent. And back then, independent wasn't as famous as it is now. People people were looked at being independent as lesser than those that were signed. Now you came up during all that before the internet before uh what what what's the word i'm looking for um the platform i'm looking for it's um social no, medias and all that no so it's social media before facebook and all uh, soundcloud and mixcloud and all that came up there was there was a platform that my, was on before my space, MySpace. My space. My, yeah. <laughs> myspace yeah myspace was up you know what i mean um you know every everything was on foot man mm -hmm. and back then you had to drop off. Your, first of all, you had to convince the the owner of the record stores to take your oh, music, yeah. right? And then you had to leave it there for consignment, right? So you give them about five, six copies, and then you hope to God that it sells, man. And then you just keep reading up, and they call you. Listen, I got one left. Re up, you know what I mean? <laughs> now, CD Baby at the time, CD Baby at the time, they were very, very helpful because they were a hell of a platform for for independent artists. Like you would sell, you would send them ten copies, and then they will sell it for you, and then they'll 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 put the money in your account. Mm -hmm. you know, so back then it was cool, but we had to do a lot of we had to do a lot, man. We had to actually, in order for it to be observed and acknowledged as a as a as a release, you would have to send it on a regular cassette tape to the Library of Congress oh, first. Oh wow. wow! Okay. And then BMI will send you a packet where you had to write it, write your lyrics and write all the information of the song down, send it back to BMI, and BMI won't get back to you to three months later. <laughs> uh, the good old days. <laughs> Before you could put yeah. it out, right? And I'm talking about, this is back in 90, 92, 93, 94. Right, right. Now you do BMI, BMI, you get on the computer, and it's two minutes. You put the song in for two minutes, and you get to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You have to, and you don't even have to register at the Library of Congress anymore. You know what I mean? I have this book where it was like how to break even into the um, record business. And basically, it detailed everything you was just kicking just a minute ago. I mean, I'm pretty sure you went through where you had to sing your CDs out to get um to get mastered and remixed and have the CD cover done and wait for it to come in the mail and come back and then put them in the store. Like you said, go through the stores, consignment and all that. And now... Nowadays, how, how have you converted to from what we was doing back then to what they're doing now as far as like um, 
putting stuff out digitally. Like you say, you, you just sit at the computer, type something in, and two minutes later, your stuff is out there. So how, how do you, um, how do you, how did you ease into that transition? Man, it took a long time, man, because I'm, I'm used to the, you know, the analog. I'm used to the hustle and bustle. So, you know, when that happened, I was like, wow, is this easy now to put stuff out? This is crazy. <laughs> but, but I still don't let that affect the quality of the music that I make to put out. Mm -hmm. Because it's easy don't mean I'm going to put something out in two days. Oh, you yeah. know what I mean? I oh, yeah. take my time. I still go through the whole plat, the whole foundation and the, you know, the way I do my things, right? So, you know, now it's, it's totally different, but you got to really strategize because um, if you don't have a certain platform or certain, you know, people that have been rocking with you since back then, because I got a big fan base in Japan. Mm. So when I drop stuff, you know, I get to see funds, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm grateful for that, you know what I mean? So, you know, when I put stuff out, you know, America, you know, the United States, they might not take it, you know what I'm saying? You got some people that might buy it. But honestly, man, if it wasn't for my Japanese people, man, I don't, I wouldn't be doing this no more. To be honest with you, you know what I mean. So, I sell a lot of, I sell a lot of music, especially digital now over there. You know, directly from me, like they'll DM me and buy it from me directly. Mm. Because they, they know that they're not supporting you if they don't do it. That way. You know what I mean? But that's a whole different, another level. But um, from what it is now, from what it was back then, man, I'm grateful. I love what people are doing right now. I love the younger folks, you know, that are doing it now. They 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 really represent. They push the envelope forward, and um, I just feel like they open a lot of doors for people like us to still be around and still work. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's, there's a lot of guys that I can name that I know personally that that actually live off of this. You know what I mean? And and to say that you live off of the music now, the way things are, God bless you, man. You know what I mean? But there's a lot of people out here that I can name that. I could say that should be living off of their music, but they don't. Right. You know what I mean? But you know, that's a whole nother conversation. But um a lot I love it, man. I love the way it's been coming. I love how it is now. Um, I'm a big fan of a lot of people. I speak to these guys through the DMs and I start relationships with them and um, you know, and I let them know, man, if they ever need anything, you know what I mean? I could guide you to the right places, you know what I'm saying? Like if you need me to do something for you or put you directly somewhere. I can help you with that. Because I know a lot of people, man. I just don't be out there, you know, yapping about it or anything like that, you know, because I feel like you let your music speak for itself, right? So surprise everybody. Let your music speak. But um, as far as knowing people, man, I know a lot of people, man. I just, I'm real humble with everything, and I'm very grateful where I'm at, what I have, what I don't have. And, um, you know, that's how I live my life, man. But just looking at the Zaz Z mixtape that you did with Glip Styles shows that you do have a big effect on this industry as, as far as like even the underground and even maybe some above ground right there seeing that seeing that you have the right connects and you know you i mean pretty much listening to your mixtape i i gotta say you're an all-around artist yeah i appreciate different. that man it's mm -hmm. like you went through different if you listen to the mixtape once again if, for the listeners out there if you find if you can find it i believe you know i'm, I'm gonna have zaz break it down for you guys where you can find it but when you find the mixtape, it pretty much covers his um, decades long career and shows that he's not just an artist that can just do hip hop one way. He does it a couple other ways too. And he fits in all them categories. And I appreciate it. Yo, it was just it was just like to me, I was like, yo, pe people older than me can enjoy this. I'm I'm pretty old myself, but people older than me can enjoy this mixtape. You can play this for even a pop crowd and they'll like it, you know, they'll, they'll get into it. The underground crowd will appreciate it. And like you said, you got people from across seas that will enjoy the hell out of this mixtape. Um, I mean, you cover a lot of ground. It's pretty dope. I mean, salute to you. I mean, I, my whole way of thinking was changed listening to this mixtape. I was like, I was, I was Friday, I'm sitting there like, yo, let me, yo, this, yo, he, I had to listen to it like three or four times. Like, he actually did his thing on this. It's crazy. I appreciate that, man. Nah, it came about like that. That came about like I always wanted to do. That was a dream of mine, man. Cause, you know, I, I, I've sell, I've sold a lot of mixtapes. You know, for DJ Doo-Wop, Tony Touch. You know, I used to be on the train, on the L train. You know, I would work a regular job and then get off the job and then hustle the mixtapes on the way home. Mm. So I'm selling 
them on, I'll be selling them on the, on the L train, you know what I mean, on the way back to Brooklyn. And um, I'll be right out of my pocket, you know what I mean, right out of my bag, you know, selling the mixtapes and whatnot. So, you know, I got a lot of love when it comes to, you know, mixtapes and whatnot because I feel like, you know, the DJs do a lot. That's so I was like, man. People that, that has, has done that way of thinking, like uh, when you think about it, you're selling mixtapes out of your bag. It, it takes you back to the days where, like, even Master P was selling records out of his trunk. Yes. You know, a, a lot of independent artists sold records out of their trunk. Me, myself, I've hustled mixtapes to the stores, going from store to store, um, carrying a back, <laughs> backpack, my own mixtapes, running around. And you seem to appreciate the fans a little bit more. Yeah. Because and you, you understand, like, everything you do, and you get a fan, you appreciate that a whole lot more than the casual person that just throws something out and gets like maybe 10 people go out and buy it and they'll be like, yeah. You know, whereas you, every person that's going to buy your stuff or, or at least connects with you, you're going to appreciate that a whole lot more than the normal hip hop person. Yeah, man. It's, it's beautiful, man, because, you know, music brings people together, man, you know? So. You know, like right now, you know, I'm working, you know, with DJ Glyph Styles too, man. And it's like, you know, we got a solid relationship and uh, we know what we both want. And um, I said, man, I said, Glyph, man, you know what, man, I, I want to do a mixtape, man. And he's like, word, just send me the tracks just like that. So, you know, it took me a while to send him the tracks, man. It literally took me months to send him the tracks because every time I went through my stuff, I got all sentimental. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so you know, you see all that, and you're like, man, I think I recorded all that music. Like it's crazy. So I had to really, really pick which ones I thought. But I saw I sent him everything, and I let him pick which ones he mm -hmm. wanted. Because I feel like as a so, DJ, yeah, yeah, you got to let him do his thing. Yo, you know, that, you got to do his thing. I did mixtapes with anybody that's ever I've done a mixtape with. It's like that, I, I'd be like, yo, just send me your stuff, and let me mix it. I'll pick the songs and yeah. throw them together. If it fits right, I'll do that. Me, in fact, my man Green Lantern did the same thing with the first Griselda tape. He he called me and was like, well, Chris, you know more about Griselda than I do. Send me a mixtape. Send me like 60-something joints. I sent it to him, and he picked whatever he wanted, and that came to Griselda mixtape that, where Green ended up becoming their DJ. So, How about that? How about that? Yeah. Yeah, man. So, you know, Shout we did that. Big French. I see him in the chat right now. Big French. Yo, man. Big French. He wants to me and Big French got a me and Big French got an album coming, man. It's called Back Then. I think he wants to join the chat. You know, is it all right if we yeah. let him join the chat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bring him in, man. We gotta, we gotta bring him in for sure, man. Let's see if we can put him on right here. Here we go. All right. I didn't want him to step on your time or nothing. You know, let me see if I can. Ah, that's my brother, man. Put him right. on there, man. He's a part of this. He's yeah. a part of all What's this. Going on? What up? What up? What up? Salute! Salute! My brother, man. Hey, hey, big French, man. You got to let these cats know, man, what we got coming, man. <laughs> oh, man. Back then? Oh, Back man. They're not ready. <laughs> They're not ready. I seen the last joint y'all did with, um, where y'all combined it. In fact, the joint with, um, Nezra Nefertiti is a favorite, a favorite joint of mine also. And, um, yo, I, I like the flavor in the back and forth between both of you two as well. So, I'll salute to you real quick. Uh, yeah. Facts. And she got a she got her own album out called Letters from the Akashic. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. yeah we're bumping it already. Yeah, that 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 album is special. <laughs> yeah. Well, how's it working with Big French right there, I'm Zaz? How how do you oh, man. Well here's the thing, right? Me and Big French, you know, we we good friends. That's like my brother, you know what I mean? We don't talk every day, but he know I got mad love for him and I tell him all the time and I feel like, you know. To me, Big French is one of the most amazing people, first of all. Second of all, he's an amazing producer, man. And when I tell you that he brings the best out of you, man, it comes effortlessly on his yeah. tracks, bro. He sets you up, up to whereas you come and it's like, boom. Like the Jones that I'm not knocking out, he knows I take my time. because I'm not putting nothing out that I don't feel is right. And I told him that. I said, look, when we first started, I said, French, send me the tracks that nobody wanted back in the 90s. <laughs> He said to me like 60 something tracks. <laughs> and he said, pick 12. So I picked 12. And um I, I'm not telling you, man, it was so hard to pick those 12, man. But I went with my heart. I said, yo, 
I said, French, I want these 12. He said, go ahead, do your thing, man. You got work to do. And that's how it was. And it's always been genuine. And people don't know this a lot because they don't dig in. But I actually manage French as well. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? When it comes to his production. And um, I was actually trying to go to whereas we could deal with the Hispanic, you know, with the Latin side of reggaeton. Yeah. Because French had a hell of a sound. So that's that's where we at with it. And, you know, doing like, you know, sound stuff for like the movies and all that. You know, that's the plan. So, you know, he working on, on all that. But when he ready, you know, we're going to go ahead and we'll start doing that too. So, you know, like I, like I said, man, you know, I try to do the best I can for everybody, you know. And um, at the end of the day, man, I love my brother right there, man. He's been a nice. real one. And, um, you know, and it's all love, man, for sure. Hey, French, I've seen your name on a couple of production credits as well, too, before. Right. But I'm amazed to see you working with Zaz right there doing your thing. And he just noticed. I didn't know that you've been around since the 90s, too, huh? Yes, sir. I got my first placement in 1995 of KRS-One. What? Oh, Boom. Man, how do I not know that? Yeah. <laughs> oh. the, song, the song is called The Automatic on, on uh, Chris's uh, the solo album. Damn, I should know that. Why? Damn, I call myself a hip hop historian. I should be slapping myself right now. <laughs> that's not the only that's not the only thing too, man. Will nah. Smith. Yeah. You know what I mean? Will, Will Smith, mm. you know? Alicia Keys. Yeah. You know, French. French. French been around for years, yeah, man. Been around that's the thing. block a few times. <laughs> I've definitely been around the block a few times. I just thank God I don't look like what I've been through. Mm. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that makes the both of us, brother. You feel me? <laughs> mm. Yeah, that's man. It, man. I'm grateful and I'm humble about it. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I'm not one of them producers that always got to mention about, oh, I, I did this, I did that. You know what I'm saying? I just, I'm one of them dudes. I just let the music speak. You know what I'm saying? If you do do your homework on me, you'll see everything's there. Everything is Googleable and searchable. Yeah, so we won't see Big French dancing in the video. Not You see me in the video, <laughs> but I won't be dancing. You know what I'm saying? Unless it's called for. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, I mean, at the end of the day, I'm hip hop. Okay. I'm, 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 I'm the yeah. textbook definition of hip hop. Mm. You know what I'm saying? We was there when they cut the lights on hip hop, when motherfuckers was out there DJing in the park, getting electrocuted from the light poles and shit. We was there for all of that. You know what I'm saying? In, before in the heat with a wet towel, in the heat with a wet towel performing did, yeah. the block party, carrying big crates of records, amps and yeah. speakers, all that shit, man. We was there for all of that. You know. Mm -hmm. So it's a different kind of love. Exactly. Mm. You know. That's great, yo. Seeing. Since you both collaborating, so what do y'all got coming? What, what what do you guys got coming? I mean, I saw, Zaz, Zaz, when you mentioned that you and French are having something coming, up, I saw you rub your chin a little bit. It was like, mm. <laughs> it's, it's like he oh, was like evil genius. Like, yeah, we got some really heat coming. So what's, oh, man, what's man. coming you know, he, from you right? He now? takes you back. He takes you back. You know what I mean? So that's why I was like, yo, we gonna call this joint back then because mm -hmm. he really does, man. And you know, it forces you to rhyme. A certain way, but at the same time, you make it where it's where it's current. You know what I mean? You make it where it's current, with still with that bebop, you know, hip hop kind of feel at the end of the day. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's that's what we uh, that, that's what we bring into the table for sure, man. All right, there, I think I think you just sent me something also from that you and Big French. In fact, let me see if I can pull it up. It's called Super Superstars, right? That, that joint was peace. Yo, I love that joint, man. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, man. That was the first one I recorded. And um, I love that track, man. Because it reminds me of like the early 90s. But it has a feel that it could be out now. You know what I mean? Yeah, and that's that's what how I do. felt about it. That's how I felt about it. That's so, a good job on that, French, man. That's, thank you, brother. Appreciate good it. Good job on you, Zaz, too, just uh, killing man. that. I appreciate it, man. You know? You know, I don't I don't work with everybody, man, you know, but I'm you know, fortunately, you know, Big French was one of my idols when it comes to that. So when I reached out, you know, he's like, you know, we both decided, yo, it's it's time for a Zaz and Big French album. Right. <laughs> and I was like, yo, let's do it, you know what I mean? So yeah, I'm looking forward to that for sure, man. Now speaking of collaborations, um my homegirl just joined the chat a second ago. Indigo Phoenix. I see you are on um, the new um, Rugged Triad album, too, as well. What's up with that? Oh, man, that's another person that I genuinely got love for. And, um, you know, it's beyond the music. I tell everybody, man, the hell with the music. Yeah. We got to have a relationship first. You see what I'm saying? Because we ain't for 
but not over no damn music. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I make that very clear when I work with people. I tell them, you fam now. You know what I mean? Because I, I have a real tight circle and I'm very, I'm very close. You know what I'm saying? When it comes to me. So when I share my life with you, when I deal with you, that means I got genuine love for you. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, you know, with her, it was like we always spoke. You know, she came on the podcast, and when I saw that she showed her guts and telling me everything and how she loved hip hop so much, I took a liking to her. Mm -hmm. And then we started talking. She didn't even know that I rhymed. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So when I told her, yo, you know, let's do something, me, you know what I'm saying? Me and Doc, because at the time, me and Doc, you know, we were, very, we were doing our thing, whatever, um, on the table. And then um, it came about where it came to the opportunity where we did that. And then we put it up to Joan. And when I sent it back, she's like, wow, Zaz, I didn't know you spit like that. I said, you never asked. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, so we became close after that. And now it's like, boom. So now we got the, you know, rugged regime, Joan. And it's, it's amazing. It's an amazing thing. They, they're amazing people. And I got love for every single one. I'm real tight with the vet. That's my brother right there. You know, and, um, you know that that's where every all this came about. You know, with the knockers and everything like that. That's another album that's completely done. You know, the knockers. Mm -hmm. That's me, Iron, and and the Vec B. You know, Iron and the Vec B, and myself. And that album's pretty much done. So you know, we got that going, and uh, we're gonna drop a single. I was talking to the Vec this morning. It's gonna be around July, and then in the in the fall, you know, we'll drop that. You know what I mean? And give people everything. You know. You said the Barbarians joint. That was dope. Oh yeah, that's one of my favorites, man. Crazy. Sure. Yo, <laughs> I can't wait to play that. You know, I was holding, <laughs> I was holding it back, so I wouldn't play it on my Friday night or Saturday night show. I was, I'm gonna save it for the podcast and keep it exclusive, like, like, like you wanted me to. So, you know, when you when you get the edits for all the all your stuff, upcoming stuff, make sure I um, snatch them up for my Friday and Saturday show. No, for sure, for sure. Yeah, I'm gonna definitely. We're gonna have edits for everything. Yeah. You know, Frank is gonna mix everything down for our project, so I'm gonna send him one. I told him I ain't gonna send you nothing until the whole thing is done. Mm. So he's only heard one, one song. He's only heard yeah, that only one, heard song. one song. One joint. No one has heard no songs unless you're featured in it. You know what I mean? So you know, I'm gonna make sure that he gets everything. I'm gonna be like, yo, French, there you go, my brother. You know, and just do your thing. you know, because he's he he brings that frequency, man. See. See, Big French is on another. I can't even mix like that. I ain't even gonna hold you. So French, you know, French has a whole nother way of mixing, and I respect that, and I, I love the way he makes it sound. So he could do that, and I can focus on doing other things. You know what I mean? When it comes to that project, you know. Well, uh, I would say French basically, like you say, he's been around the block a couple of times. So yeah, he should. He's been in a produ producer's chair for quite some time. I mean, well, I'm not just a producer; I'm also a, a engineer. engineer. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I've been engineering. I graduated from the Institute of Audio Research in '92, mm. so I've been an engineer just as long as I've been a producer. Now, see, for those out there that's younger in our audience, I'm gonna let y'all know. Back then, engineering, we didn't have no remote um, stuff to go around. You had to actually do all that stuff yourself. You had to do it by nah. ear. When I when I and graduated from school, you, I mean, the world the world was still analog. <laughs> yes, the, it was still, and like we, the world. The world didn't on, turn digital. The world tape. didn't turn digital till '95. We still analyze the stuff on tape. <laughs> yeah, Barely exactly. Or anything like that, man. Scrubbing and cutting shit, and it's with ra razor blades and shit. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, remember those days, crazy. man. <laughs> Listen, it's crazy. Like I said, this, this came a long way, man. Because mm -hmm. I recall recording in Brooklyn and having to take. The 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 reels, you know real real the wheels had to take the wheels all the way to Rockefeller Center you know what I'm saying just to drop it off at the studio and take a cab like there was none of this I'll email you right now send you the track like there wasn't none of that going yeah. on man <laughs> if anybody re can remember and these two will probably vouch for me right now because I was working at Dejuan Studios this is a studio that um ended up producing Timberland um, um Missy. Jodeci and all of them back then, because they used to come up here to watch New York, Dejuan Studio, to record what way before they became super famous and all that. And I became an engineer there. I was learning engineering and production there. And I remember those days where you had to take, I mean, 
studio time itself cost a grip, son. You couldn't go in the studio and be fucking around for hours on hours unless you had a grip full of money. And if you was doing a rap track, especially, great. You know, Let me tell you something, bro. Back then, it, that separated the men from the boys right then and there. Yeah. I was paying $75 an hour. Ooh, 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 ooh. Yeah. What's that, French? And that and that was the low edge. <laughs> you feel me? And that was the the seventy five hour hour was. Mm -hmm. If you if you. I losing French a little bit. Just started at a buck fifty an hour. Ugh. You feel me? And I, I was this was a time where the course. record companies was paying for most of the studio. No oh, hell yeah, and you couldn't waste their time or money like that. Yeah, we can hear you, you hear now. Me? Hello. Now. Yeah, we can hear you now. Yeah, you were cutting out a little bit earlier. Yeah. But for yeah, man, those were the days, man. What French was describing was basically okay. Like what French was saying, basically, you had to pay a grip for studio and you couldn't mess around either. I mean, some people say now you can't mess around in certain studios, but a lot of people have home studios. There's no concept thing as home studios. You, I remember paying a thousand bucks for my four track to bring it home and, and still couldn't get the right result. I had to go back and get a six track. And that cost like two or three checks right there, you know, shit. Yeah. You know, it, it was heavy, man. You know, I get my own real uh, studio equipment. Definitely is, was nope. I used to go to Doctor Sound in Canal Street. Doctor Sound back then, you know. And I'm sure. And I, bought a Yamaha, I, bought a, I bought a Yamaha sampler, and the Yamaha sampler only gave me 11.5 seconds of sample time. <laughs> I remember I had a sampler that could only do five seconds. How about that? These guys. <laughs> Now they can sample a whole hour worth of music. Now you know what I mean. Right, right. Several hours. Yeah, how about that? How about that? Mm. Things have changed, brother, for sure, man. No shit. Sure. Salute, salute. Yes, man. Salute, my brother. DJ Cashville, what's up, man? What's going on? Um, yeah. the DJ Showtime as well. He's also in the chat. No, he's the DJ, DJ Showtime, man. My guy, man. He's always been real, man, since the beginning too, man. I got mad love for him as well. Sure. Right, so, what's the name of this album gonna be between you and Big French? Which what are you guys calling it again? It's called Back Then. Back Then. Okay, and that's coming out when? Which day? When is that coming out? I'm thinking. I'm thinking, that? I'm thinking late, late fall, man. Late fall. Right. I want it to be real. I want it to be real cold when it comes out. Mm. <laughs> you know? I want the hoodies. I want the hoodies. I want. You know, I, see, see, I, I, I sense a reason behind that. Yes. Mm. So, but we got, got work to do, man. I'm going to come out. I'm going to go back home and stuff. And, you know, me and French, we got to get together, do a couple of videos and whatnot and do it the right way and then um, take it from there, man. Yeah. Thanks. Sure. All right. So, um, yo, um, there's a debate. And since you, you're an MC and a producer, and Big French is a producer, there's a debate always going on online. I'm pretty sure you guys have heard this, where some MCs feel that it's all about them and not the producer. I say the producer and the MC is 50-50. Because no one's ever bought an acapella album of somebody rhyming. Right. And I don't think right. they bought an album full of just beats. You know, I don't hold on, hold just... on, hold on, hold on, hold on. OK, correct me. Here's yeah, the thing. Listen. He's going to tell you. You've never heard a rapper go platinum with an acapella, but instrumental yep. two instrumental albums, bro. I got three instrumental albums out right now that I'm getting mm. royalties from forever. Oh, from you maybe. feel me? I'm saying because here's the thing: rappers are gonna always need beats. Period. And then you got that mm -hmm. population of people. There's some people people out there who like instrumentals. They like records with. No words. They don't want to hear no words it's on the record. They just want to hear the beats to that yeah. to that population. But 
a rapper without beats. Right, 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 right. Now let me take back what I was just what I was gonna say. To you. And Big French, I'm glad you corrected me right there because yes, there is instrumental albums out there, and I got to remember I'm a jazz fan too. And they didn't have to have nobody singing or rhyming on it nah. for me to enjoy that album. So, yeah, I'll give you a perfect example. I'll give you a perfect mm -hmm. Cox rocking. Cox. It. <laughs> mm -hmm. Perfect example. That that and that shit went platinum. No word, mm -hmm. words, no lyrics, just music. Mm -hmm. Platinum. You know, but there's MCs out there that really actually think that. Oh well, the, the producer is just a little chip, a cog in the machine, and such. Now, and I and I have to argue with people like that. Like, how how do you expect to get over? And like you said, no rappers really went platinum or platinum ever or gold. I don't think by just throwing their rhymes out there. No, never. But let me ask. It's never happened. You this, let me ask you this though: Are you are you referring to back then? Or no, you're not back then. I'm talking about right now. now. I'm talking about right now. Not, because they full, they a lot of these cats is full of themselves, man. I ain't even gonna hold you, bro. And for you gotta be humble. No reason. You gotta be humble. In these things, I see some of these younger cats that that jump in. Like uh, I think it was Bobby Smurder. I don't know if y'all heard of this cat. Um, Bobby Smurder said that yo, yeah, our producers be trying to charge too much. I'm like, does he really know what it takes to be a producer? The, does he know the Listen. equipment you gotta buy and all this? Just, you know, so asking for here's, here's the thing about people who don't want to pay thousand dollars for being for production. Okay, go ahead. The thing about paying for production is you're not just paying for the beat, you're paying for all the hours I put in becoming mm -hmm. the producer I've become. And mm -hmm. just like with anything else, it's a name brand. You're paying for a certain name. You know what I'm saying? When you go buy a Timberland beat. And you pay that hundred fifty thousand, you ain't complaining. Mm -hmm. that one hit, mm -hmm. right? Right. So, right. Pay your producer. You'll get their beats. But here's the thing: a lot of rappers don't understand. Rappers keep their beats in in different sets. You got the A list beats, the B list beats, and the C list beats. If you want a beat for free, guess what list your beats coming from? Because the A and the B <laughs> beats, those is for sale. Fuck out of here. Mm. That's bugged out. Hey, do you do that, Zaz? Nah, listen. Do you, like I you said, think, you... I work. If I work with you, it's because I consider you even better than that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But but it's true what he says. You know what I mean? It's true what he says. You know, it's it has to do with you know now if you come to an agreement where you're gonna work together and you both are going to see the money or even more money than what the the, the actual artist is getting. You know that's that's okay too because I feel like you gotta show that's how you show your love. You can love somebody all you want, but if you're working together, what are you gonna be giving to that person? You know, what I'm saying what are you gonna be contributing to to, to what we're doing? You know what I mean? That's another that's, that's another thing too that you gotta keep in mind. So if you decide to work together, it's fifty fifty right down the middle, or it's nothing at all. You know what I'm saying? I think the reason why some people do say that now is because you know the, the whole digital divide thing. Do you like? Um, being in the studio with the producer, going over the beat with them, or do you prefer, you know, like your email a beat to me and I'll rhyme over it and send it back to you? Do you? I mean, both of you can answer that. You know, do you like prefer that, or do you prefer the MC right there I in the studio with you? Prefer, or you I prefer or, or whatever. Yeah, I prefer to have if I'm if I'm giving somebody a beat for projects, you know, in that person's. Mind, I want to see how they vibe. You know what I'm saying? And I want to. If I don't like you as a person, I don't want you rapping over my shit. <laughs> Period. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It, it's deeper than just. It got to be more than just exactly. the money. I mean, yes. everybody got to exactly sell their shit and make money, but. At the end of the day, we all got we and we all are probably victims of this. We we've turned the the love of hip hop into a business. Mm. Both. You got to remember why why we why we started doing this shit. We started doing. It, 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 there was no money in the beginning. We did it because it was love. Yep. You know what I'm saying? We captured that love because that's why the music of today is so stale because it's all business. Mm. Yeah. You know? 
reason, that's why you see how we work, and that, and that and that's how we all work, you know. Mm -hmm. Me and French, me and Glyph Styles, me and Pete and Jones, you know, me and home just started working together. And if it, if it, if there's no mutual respect or mutual love for what we doing, you know, what you doing, what I'm doing, mm -hmm. if we can't mix that together, then we ain't doing nothing at all. Yeah, hell yeah. I, I would always tell Casey. I said, Casey, if it ain't right, we ain't doing it, man. The case said, our, rela our relationship comes first, bro. We ain't. I rather not put nothing out, bro, than not have. A, a, a relationship with the person that I'm working with, right? Okay, I get and I, that. I, I get stand by that. You know what I mean? I stand by that. Very, very and French knows we talk, you know, me and French, you know, we might not talk for a couple, but then we, when we talk, we talk, and, you know, I tell him how I feel, he tells him how he feels, and we talk about how the game is and everything, and, you know, we agree. We agree with how everything is right now, you know what I mean? Hmm. I, you know? I, I, I respect that collaboration right there. I love that right there. That when you guys collaborate, you got friends first. Yeah. Rather yeah, that, that, that keeps everything organic. Yes. Yeah. I feel that right. Yeah, me and me and French man, we we, we don't have to talk every day, man. Super but when bad. we talk, you know, we be like, yo, yo, you know, what's good, yo? And we, it's you know, like, like I saw him yesterday. <laughs> Let me ask you what's something, up, big bro. You mind? You mind if I smoke weed on your platform? No, go, it's not like. It's like it's, <laughs> Like anybody's gonna be he's, mad about that. In the, he's in the dirty restaurant right, right now. I mean, usually I have a drink in my hand, but it's early for me. So usually yeah. I'll, I'll wait till two o'clock to start drinking. You know, nah, especially I got a, when I'm outside. I got a session starting. I got a session starting at two o'clock. So I want to get my mind right beforehand. You feel go, me? Go ahead. Do your thing, Brent. There you go. That's what's up. Man. You know, anyway, I gotta respectfully yo, um, ask. You know, everybody don't don't allow smoking weed on their platform, so I had to ask. You know what I'm saying? Nah, you can smoke away, smoke away. It is like almost like drink champs. You can smoke champs, whatever. Go, go. Hey, yeah. need a show for for smoke champs. We definitely do, bro. <laughs> if the police don't shut do it that. down, of course. <laughs> Weed is legal in New York. How would they shut it down? Well, not in all, all parts of New York. Yeah, yeah. Rochester, what part of New York is it not legal? In, Ro in Rochester, they, in Rochester, it's still kind of funny up here a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, over there is still kind of funny. Yeah, mm -hmm. I heard. Well, in yeah, New we, York we, we City, to, we, got, we walk we in the streets with our blood now. Yeah. Niggas is outside smoking. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. Oh, man. Remember, New York City has always been a different its own place than the rest of uh, its own place compared to the rest of the state. Right. That's I know. another world there. Man. That's yeah. another world there. Yeah, yeah, I've been down there, man. It's a whole new world and shit. Yeah. Anyway, yo, um, Moving on, okay. Uh, let's talk about for the DJs radio. Now, yes. How long has that been in action, and how? Why did you start that? Why, what? What? What came up with the inspiration for you to start doing that? And how? You, how did you move in that way of putting it into podcast form and such? So what happened was, was I used to do let's chop it up with Zai, mm -hmm. and that was. A podcast that I did before, and I was actually catering to the artists. Okay, I remember seeing that. Yep. And then I, and then I was like, "Yo, okay, you know, that's that's enough for the artists." You know what I mean? And I'm like, "Damn, we got to do more for the DJs, man." Mm -hmm. You know, because I see a lot of stuff, man, that, that that you know, me personally, I don't like. You know what I mean? But you know, that's me. That that's that's my opinion. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like you know, as artists, you know, a lot of artists you know they send the music to the dj and then they don't show the dj no love mm. after that it's like the dj don't the dj don't exist no more mm -hmm. right but DJ only exists when you put when you put a single out right yeah. so you know you don't you don't repost you don't repost them in your stories you don't repost them in your post you don't big them up you don't take one dj and put them on there and say yo i want to show love to this dj right here because this dj here every time i put something out he showed me love. Now nah, they don't do none of that. You know what I mean? Right. So right. I was like, I said, damn, what can I do to show love up to the DJs? Cause I love DJs, man. I love DJs more than actual artists. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So at the end of the day, I said, you know what? I'm gonna make something up and it's gonna be called For the DJs. But I said, hold up. For the DJs radio, mm. right? Where it's gonna be all about the DJ. Mm. So I start reaching out to certain people you know certain certain djs that i love myself before i told them to come on the platform 
So now we got six DJs on a weekly basis mm -hmm. coming on the podcast and doing a show Monday through Saturday. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Congratulations on that. And it's it's a beautiful thing. And, that, and they're dope. so... They're, they're so appreciative, man. I mean, every time they send a mix, they're like, Zaz, we appreciate for everything you do. I'm like, nah, we appreciate for everything that we do because this is a us thing, you know what I'm saying? We did this together. This is ours, you know? So that's like I was telling you, Chris, you were part of it too. You know what I mean? You were part of the 40 DJs well, radio. You feel I me? I like that because um, I like the whole concept of that due to the fact that what you said about that was true because there's a lot of times where you... I, I, I myself, in my whole long DJ career, I try to build relationships with all the artists I fuck with, right? And I, I try to establish where they recognize me, they know my name. I, I do extra stuff like put the stuff on Twitter. I do the playlist on Twitter. I include the artwork. I promote it in my stories. I do all kinds of extra shit, you know, whereas other DJs will just put the playlist up and just rock with that. So me, I, I try to show appreciation to the artists for at least sending me the stuff material, the material that they do, because they don't have to send it to me. They, I mean, some of these guys never even knew what kind of reach I had compared to like a uh, Funk Master Flex or uh, um, what, um, what's his name? Peter Rosenberg or something like yeah. that. You know, yeah. they, they, they didn't know me from Adam. So it's like every per person I tried to, um, I tried to promote myself I try to show some kind of appreciation. And sometimes you don't get it back. I mean, this is something on uh, one of my, I'm not going to name him, one of my DJs on SFT 5 by Radio, his main thing was always mad about how, um, oh, what's up? I'm doing the podcast right now, son. Chill. <laughs> <All right>. <laughs> 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 My cousin walking down the street. This is you know, what's up? Yeah, anyway, <laughs> this is what happens when you do do um, broadcast outside. People are gonna interrupt you. Anyway, um, going back to what I was saying, oh, yeah. I, one of my DJs was complaining about how the fact that um, how he felt that the artists were not appreciative to showing the DJs mad love because it's like you should be reposting this, like what you, what you just said, Zaz. You should be reposting this. You should say that, yo, this person is playing you. Appreciate, you know, I'm gonna show appreciation to him. And I and I realize that sometimes you get a, too big, or you know, where I I'll give you an example. And this ain't the point I'm out or nothing like this. Like uh, Westside Gun and Conway, right? When they first came out, I was, you know, because they're from my area, I was showing them mad love because I they had a different type of sound. They was they was doing their thing, right? Now, in the beginning, yes, they was reposting. They was sending stuff out. But the bigger they got, you that's, know, that's what happened. See, you know, that you know, all of a sudden the mentions just started get getting a little shorter, you know, and all that. And I think that's what <coughs> my man was my man was mad about. Like, yo, we help promote these artists and get them where they are, and they're not showing us love back. They're not even sending us free shit no more. And it's like, well, maybe that might be in your case, but to me, we, I'm not in it to get mad love from mad people. I'm just in it because I love hip hop. I want it to get out there. I want artists, that, you know, that's why I focus on the underground stuff. I want to focus on the artists that don't get love 24 seven. But that's dope. You know, people like, like you, like you and Big French, you know, people don't, they may have heard your names, but they're not familiar with it because it's not played on a hot 97. It's not on right. a 105 The Beat. It's not on the BLS or nothing like that. They don't hear that music all the time. So I focus basically on the artists that I know that are great, dope, just as good as the artists that you hear all the time, but I want them to be known too as well. And I've always done that since the 90s. Because there was a time nobody knew who Wu-Tang was. There was a time when nobody knew who Jay-Z or Nas was. Buster yeah. Rhymes, no, nobody knew. A lot of these artists that I helped promote, Nobody knew who they were at the time. Remember when the Fuji's came out? Yeah. The Fuji's just did their last show last night. They had a reunion the show. They show. did their last show last night. I remember when nobody was messing with them, but I was playing them. You know, Eminem. Even Eminem 
was a nobody when we, he came out, man. Yeah, yeah well, everybody but was, was a I nobody on their first way out. But see, here's the thing: a lot of people forgot mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. DJ's job was to is to break, break records, break to break the record that nobody know about popular. You know what I'm saying? But here's the thing: a lot of DJs don't want to break records. They just play the shit that's already out. That's and, a big and, and disconnect. Just for the, uh, not fame, but more popularity. You become DJ because you play it all of your shit. Yeah, but your job as a DJ is to bring the new and the hot shit. And a lot of DJs just ain't doing program. Right. What number one? What's, no, what's, the, what's the number what's one? Got a thousand fucking views. The number one dude that I, I, I we'll keep play that. doing that basically is um, one dude I used to follow. I, he, I used, to, in fact, I modeled myself on him when I first started. Was Funkmaster Flex because he used to break records. Uh, and that was when he was real. Man. Man. Juice, juice, he used what to up? Break records, but now he even said it on his own platform. He said, "Look, I'm only playing what's popular in the clubs." And I became a popular DJ, you know, I'm not br really breaking records too much anymore. And it's like, whatever's popping in the clubs, that's what he's playing on his show. So it's like, I can't mess with him no more. <laughs> it's like, yo, I mean, yeah, but that is. I remember, crash. listen, I remember when I used to be in the village mm -hmm. and he used to come on High 97 at 7 p.m. And he used to stop by the McDonald's with records under his, under his arm. <laughs> You know what? He came a long way, man. But see, stuff like that is wrong, bro. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Because you was up there with Mar Marley Moore and all that and Pete Rock. You know what I'm saying? When they had them shows, the Future Flavors and all right, that. Right. Now, all of a sudden, now, you know, now all of a sudden you're too big now, you know? Mm -hmm. with that's why we got platforms like this. That's why we got platforms like For the DJs Radio. We got platforms like Straight From the Underground, you know? You got nice. platforms like, you know, all, all these that are out there, you know, you know, DJ John Doe, Meeks, and all those guys. They, they, this is what, you know, those, oh, those, those are the ones peoples. that we gotta support. You know what I mean? Facts. Those my dudes. Support them, bro. For real. Yo, shout out to Juice Guy on um, 504. He just reminded me Salute. that I, I did free, see French's name in a couple of things. I mean, in fact, yeah. he did a couple of tracks for my man Flea Lord. Right, Flea Lord. And I was, I was his main engineer. For like when he did the 12 for 12 when he, on oh yeah he was, he was on that he released 12 albums one a month mm -hmm. yeah, and I, I, I engineered and mixed all of them yep. so, mm. crazy yeah. lord yeah, mom sure. work for you back then mm. yeah lord uh, mob man flea lord man flea world was one of the first ones that came out yo shout out to me fucks too man yeah. for real yeah. man well, uh, guys in there. well, as far as I know, I, I, I was told that me fucks already retired out the game. What? Done. I, I he just came up with something a little while yeah. ago. Damn, I didn't know he retired. I got a single out. I got a single out with me fucks in the production that everybody don't know. It's called Everything. Mm. And that's on there too. Mm. So, well, this is this is like I heard it through the grapevine kind of shit. I don't know if it's true. I haven't spoken to the dude, so I don't know if he's truly retired. But I, you know, that's the word word, word in the street. This is that he retired. All right, we'll find out. Or doing just doing something else besides hip hop. We'll find out soon. But going back to for the <coughs> DJs radio. Now, when you selected Wait, those DJs as, I mean, like you said, you was a, I guess you were a big fan of them. And you, yeah, sure. you recruited them and got down with it. So, yeah. mm -hmm. how hard was it to get it on um, podcast format? To it was that it was actually smooth, man. Because right now we got like a deal with Spotify. You know what okay. I mean? So the Forty DJs Radio is is sponsored by Spotify itself. So, um, so now you know it was smooth, man. I mean, I reached out to everybody that I got love for, and you know. And we actually have private chats, you know what I mean, where where me and 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 you know TMD and DJ Jazzy what we speak every day, you know what I mean. When it comes to DJ Mega, you know DJ Mega was the first one. DJ Mega was the first, you know, one that 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 we that that came on the podcast. 
You know what I'm saying? So I got a lot of love for him as well because he was the one that started it with me. You know what I mean? So, and then it came from there. And then we got we got a guy, you know, I mean, DJ Scam and, you know, Hoff, DJ Hoffa just came on. You know what I'm saying? He's on he's on every Wednesday now. And um, this is guy, man, you know, DJ Escondo, man. That guy got a fan base out of this world, man. Wow. A lot of people don't know this guy, but he, look him up. Look him no, he, up. This he, he, has, base, he has his fans, right? He got, got a fan base, man. This, this guy got numbers like artists, you know what I'm saying? Like guys that, this guy's numbers is crazy on the podcast, man. And, um, you know, DJ Glyph Styles, like I said, man, everybody brings something to the table and they have a totally different styles. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Because I thought that to me, I come from the old school era. So when a DJ DJ, I figured a DJ supposed to scratch, cut, supposed to transition a certain way. Not really, man. Everybody has their own style. DJ Jazzy, what? He could make songs from the 80s and blend them with songs from now. And you can't even tell that it's different songs unless you know the songs personally. Right. <laughs> He's a genius. He's a genius. Glyph Styles has DJ a whole Blast other Luke. style. You know, DJ Mega got his own style. DJ Scam brings that hardcore and it's like boom. And Scandal is on a whole nother level. TMD brings that college radio feel to the to the platform. You know what I'm saying? You from you from that from that ever yourself. Right. So you would acknowledge that and you would appreciate that when it comes to we have a lot to offer at for the DJ's radio. You feel me? Well, that's great. I'm, gl I'm glad to see you doing and progressing on that right mm -hmm. there. In fact, like I said, I've seen it being pop. It keeps popping up on my on my Spotify. And it's like, yo, I'm like, I didn't, I didn't know you was behind that until you told me. Yeah, yeah, because it's all about dumb, man. It's all it was all it's all about dumb, man. You know, and uh, and the love is genuine. We all have our we we have our you know we speak about personal stuff. We speak about music. You know. You know, me and Scam, we talk, you know, me and Mega, Mega, he tells me his thing, you know what I mean? It's like everybody, you know, and, and, and you know, and, and some of the DJs would be like, look, you know, when they be on other platforms, they'd be like, look, do it like Zaz does it, you know? Like, do it like Zaz does it because it's all about dumb. You know what I'm saying? It's not all about me. I put myself in the front because I want people to say, yo, look, Zaz rocks with these cats. This is the platform that he got for them, you know what I mean? So that's what, that's what it is, man. But that's pretty much the same format that I do for SFT 585 Radio. Basically, I, I, I didn't want the DJs to change their format or nothing for me. Basically, just play, play what you want. I mean, well, basically, keep it underground hip hop. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna say that right now. You know, so because, you know, I figure like Top 40 has its place, and that's already on FM radio and such. If there's gonna be internet based, and I want people to enjoy it that way, I want them to make sure they play. They pretty much, you know, give the artists that ain't getting shine, shine. You know what I'm saying? So we got different DJs. Like, I got like seven or eight DJs that send me new stuff each and every week. And they they play what they want. They they can be two hours. It can be three hours. It can be an hour and a half. It doesn't matter as long as you give me new material and content. And we fill up the rest of the joints with playing albums and singles throughout the rest of the day. You know, yep. so I want people to, to come to it like, well, like DJ Grasshopper, DJ Ronsha, and a couple other ones that, you know, they get to play what they want. Jazzy Way. You can even tell him, ask him, like, I don't restrict the format in no way possible. Right. You know, keep keep doing what you're doing, you know, and like you say, everybody brings their own fan base, you know, and it's, it's like, good. wow, you know, the numbers, it's I facts. see the numbers, and they'd be like, that's dope. It's a big family, man. It's a big family, man. It feels good, man, to be a part of that, you know, to be a part of something like that, for sure. Man. You know, and Chris, man, we gonna do something for sure, man. Me and you gotta get, you know, for the D baby, man. You, you a part of it? You know, what I'm saying I already told you, you a part of that joint, you know. And um, we got a lot, we got a lot of work to do, man, for sure. I think it's, it's I think we got the foundation, but we we gotta take it to a level where. We could all end up on Sirius XM. You know what I'm saying? The channel, the whole channel, mm -hmm. can end up on Sirius XM. Yo. That's that's what I want. You know what I mean? That's what I want. What's up, friend? You know, Yo, real quick, fellas. Real quick, fellas. Let me connect the dots. DJ Blast, 
meet Zaz, Zaz, link up with DJ Black, phenomenal DJ, and DJ Chris, thanks for bringing me to your platform. I got a studio session starting right now, so I got to make a move. All right, friends, thanks for my brother, man. Big French, man. I appreciate him. I'm jumping in real quick. Be safe, bro. Yeah, that was a surprise. Big French jumping in right there. Yeah, man. You got to, man. You know, where's Casey Jones at? Is Casey Jones in here? I'm not sure. I, I didn't see his name pop up, but well, he'll DJ he'll probably pop up or check out a little bit later on. But for yeah. real, salute to you for doing what you're doing with um for the DJ's radio, man. That that's similar to what I'm doing with SFT Five by Radio. You're showing love to the DJs. You're you're getting the stuff out there. They're all playing their own stuff. You're not you're not interfering in any way. And like you, I'm just the face of it. You know, I do my own show, but I like I said, I don't tell the DJs what to play. They just do what they do. You know, and that's it. Yes, for sure, for sure, man. It's a beautiful thing, man. I'm just glad. I'm just glad that I'm able to do it. And you know, I, I want to make it to whereas if a DJ's you know gear got messed up, we want to be able to go ahead and get him another piece of equipment. That's how I want it to happen. You know what I'm saying? Mm. If a DJ needs a certain setup, you know, and we got the funds to do it, I want to be able to provide for the for the, for that DJ that's on the show. Mm. You know what I mean? That's what we're gearing for. You know what I mean? I want everybody to be able to, you know, and maybe at one point, you know, have an income, you know what I'm saying? Where everybody has an income where we get paid every week, like a job. You know what I'm saying? But we got to keep building it and keep putting it to the level whereas, you know, we could do that one day, you know? So, and that's the plan, you know, that's the plan for sure. Okay. So, let's see, going, let's see, for the DJ's radio, we can check for that pretty much on Spotify. Like you say, you're getting sponsored by Spotify. Once again, congratulations for that, because it's very hard to get a podcast going on Spotify. It's not as easy as you think, and you, you don't see as much money as you, for real, even doing this podcast with Spreaker.com and, and Apple Podcasts and all that, there's money to be gotten but it's not like super mad amount yet yeah not yet, not yet. we're not there yet but we're gonna get there you, know? you, you hear about these spotify and all these podcast deals where dudes is raking in millions of that but then those are people who are just talking we're we're djs we're, we're playing music trying to introduce music to other people but without going through this you know and peace to my man static select and dj clips and all of them yes but, you know, not all of us can get on satellite radio. You know what I'm saying? Not now. Not, not now, but we will be. We will be. Satellite radio. We coming, man. man. Watch. You'll see, man. I'm going to tell you. We'll see, man. One day we're going to be on. We're going to have a For the DJs radio channel on some kind of big network. You're going to see. No, it can happen. Yeah. It, can happen. Yeah. it can happen right now with you doing the internet right now. And mm -hmm. that radio is booming right be, now. Uh, and you're going to be a part of it. You're going to be right there next to me doing it. You know what I mean? Yeah, For sure. Right. So, like you said, you got these um, joints coming. You got Big French, um, the you the Big French coming up. You got the Knockers joint coming up, and of uh, course, yeah. you you got your own solo project coming up too as well. Yeah, the solo project with me and French. I got a project with Casey Jones. Oh, yeah, you know that's that's the one I was trying to remember. You know, we got the pro the project with Casey Jones is a wrap. It's done. It's completed. Mm. We finally got it done. You know what I mean? We got um we got a few a few artists on there that's going that's on that joint and um you know I got the the setup here we got a uh, Matt Face Mossberg we got Prop the Hustler we got a uh, Misunderstood a lot of people don't know this sister is amazing actually let, she was the let, one let me let me correct you on that because I did yo shout out Prop Hustler it's Prop Hustler not Prop the Hustler but yeah, Prop Hustler. Prop. Like, Pop I've, been, I've been a fan of his for a second and the dude goes in I, i'm not sure where he's from but i like his rhyme style i like the way he rhymes and his beat selection is great and just to see you on the track with him that was like yo he got prop hustler on his track. yeah you got it. yeah you got you got the exclusive there yo, man for sure flavor, man. Yo, shout out to prop sure, hustler, man. Man. and you know you got there? and you know misunderstood man from the 40 year old version on netflix He's on the album too. That's my oh, sister. Okay. She's Muslim too. Yeah, she's a Muslim sister. So you know what I mean. She represents. And she's on that joint. I got Navek B, and of course Glyph Styles. You know wherever I'm at, Glyph Styles is right there next to me. You know what I'm saying? And, and um, you know I got Squeegee Oblong and and Cortona. Oh, you know what I'm saying? And I got the joint with Jamil Honesty. You know what I'm saying? We got that too there. So 
it's, it's an action-packed album. Um, it's completed finally. Um, which we're, we're talking to a few, you know, distributors right now to see which one's the best one to go with. And um, we ready to rock and roll, man. You know, me and Casey, we were very hard, man. It took us a few years because, you know, life, right? Life gets in the mm -hmm. way, you know. I wasn't feeling too good at the time, you know what I mean? I was overweight. Um, I lost about 123 pounds in the last year and a half, you know what I'm saying? So I feel great, you know, even with the rhyming too now, it's like I'm not out of breath, you know? So, you know, we had to get our stuff together. Casey was going through some stuff as well, so, but we got it together and the album's done now, man. So now we get to celebrate, you know what I mean? Good, man, for real. I mean, Thank you, brother, man. I, I say appreciate that, it. Because I, I seen the old pictures. And I was like, yo, he, he's, you know, I remember when we, we kicked it for a second. And I was like, yo, he looked a little slimmer than what he was before. You're like, yo, yo, he's doing this thing. I, in fact, I may have to contact you off the podcast about how you slimmed down. And see uh, if I can use it for man, I'll, be, I'll, I'll be more than honored, bro. That's another thing I want to do. I want to be an advocate, you know, for health because I feel like, um, you know, us, you know, Hispanics and Afro-American people, we don't take care of ourselves like we're supposed to. Right. And, and um, I think we should we should really watch what we put in that mouth and, you know, and um, really, really start doing all the stuff that you can do on your own. And it don't take a lot, you know? Me, yeah, I just got to stop eating these beef patties up the street. Oh, man, that, that stuff there, brother, that's, that's, a, that's a killer there, man. <laughs> I got to you know? stop eating these beef patties and potato chips and crap. We all love it, man. We all love that yeah, stuff, yeah. you know, but unfortunately, there comes a time in your life. You know, I look at it like this, right? When you was younger, you would go to the club, you will hang out, you know, drink, do everything, right? I don't even smoke. I don't even smoke no more. You know what I'm saying? I stopped smoking like maybe three months ago, four months ago. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't, I don't eat nothing that's fried. You know what I'm saying? I, I eat a lot of vegetables. I do a lot of walking. I walk a half an hour a day, you know? And we got to take care of Ain't ourselves, man, because that's for that. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Like I said, I'll be hitting you up for those tips. <laughs> yeah, for sure, man. For sure, man. We still here, man. Yo, um, pretty much, yo, we covered a lot of stuff. Is there anything you want you wanted to go over? Cause I know you spoke on a couple of things. Was there anything else you wanted to go over? Because you said you did want to talk about a couple of things. That I know... I, I know you covered the DJ thing. Yeah. You, yeah. you, you know, I, I know you was passionate about that. So yeah. is there anything else you want to cover as far um, as anything else? Just, just, just be ready, man. Be ready. There's a lot, a lot of music, you know, that's coming out. I'm currently working. Currently in the rotation, there's four albums that are pretty much one one last one got started. And um, you know, pretty much going. The one with Casey Jones, the mass scientist, that's done. Mm -hmm. Big Free, that's about 70% done. That's about 80% done. I got to go with Tone from um, Pseudo Intellectual. That guy's an amazing producer. Mm -hmm. If you don't know him, go look him up. He's an amazing producer. Um, we're doing that. And uh, we got the mixtape out and we got the merch. DM me directly if you want to purchase the merch. And um, we're doing it with Rugged Triad as well, man. With the sister, you know what I mean? So. We're busy, man, and we got the knockers. The knockers joint is completed too. That's a done deal. Okay, now, where, where can we where can we get that the tape I'm talking about with Mick from um, DJ Glipstyle? Where can we find that at? Right now, you can get it directly with me. So just DM me through my through my uh, through my Instagram, and I'll be happy to send you the you know the the mix. We charging ten dollars. You know what I'm saying? I don't think that's bad for no, twenty eight tracks. No, that's you know not bad at all. Yeah, so ten dollars. It's worth the value of that mixtape for real. Now, I appreciate that, brother. I really do, man, for sure. Over twenty something tracks, and it pretty much tells you his whole journey throughout the whole music career. And I'm I'm telling you, you're rock to every one of these tracks for real. Oh man, that means for a real? lot to me, my brother, man. That, I'm, that, yeah, I'm, I'll I'll say this about this Zaz, right? I only interview people really that I'm really, really feeling and liking. And th this is why I asked you to send me some stuff before we even talk, because I want to hear more so I can get more into you. Because I already liked the other stuff that you came out with, but I really wanted to get into it. So, you know, and, and anybody will tell you, Chris only interviews the people he really, really likes. <laughs> so that, that, that may be a fault of mine, but I, I can't 
can't really build conversations with people that I'm just like halfway on the fence about. It's, it's got to be eternally dope internal as far as I'm concerned. I so, appreciate that, my brother. It means a lot, man. And like I said, man, the feeling is mutual, man. And, you know, and we're going to do something. I got your number. You got my number. We got to oh, get together yeah. and talk about being something on for the DJs and vice versa. You know, whatever I could do to help out the show, you know, I'm here for you too, you know? Well, like, Both ways. Well, you'll be seeing the promotion for, for this as soon as soon as I put it out. So, wow, for sure. you know, oh, if man. you seen the one I did for Indigo Phoenix, you know, that, that did big numbers for me. So, you know. Oh, man. You know, That's awesome, brother. That's you know, awesome. Shout to Indy because I ain't did a podcast in like eight months due to I had some family issues to take care of. So I had to stop doing the podcast for a while and just did the um, FM radio show. So Indigo, when she said she wanted to be interviewed, I said, well, let's do it in the court podcast format. And I put the podcast together and it just took right off from there. People were waiting for it to come back. So Yeah, yeah that's awesome, man. Well, I'm glad I'm glad I'm on here and yeah, I reached out. The I'm second glad, new episode. So. Get on, I appreciate that, man, for sure, man. Yeah, I, I appreciate you gave me the opportunity because, like I said, it lit a fire underneath me. Like, yo, I really got to start doing these podcast interviews again, man. It's like get That's back awesome. into this joint. And I'm glad you're the second guest um, for this year. Yeah, you know, appreciate you. And um, once again, the congratulations on the whole um, For the DJs radio thing and, yeah. of course, your upcoming projects. Yes, we got the T-shirts out, too. All the merch is out. DM me directly. If you want to look good like this, you know what I mean? Grab yourself a shirt, you know what I mean? All right. And yo, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to do a little cross promotion real quick. Ty Phoenix, I see you in the chat. Ty yo. Phoenix. She got a new single out called Shine. Yo, Ty, I want you to be my third guest. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yo, I've been meaning to interview her for a year or more now. So, yo, I have yes, to for sure. And make sure she send me her stuff. Send me her stuff, man. We, we can play that joint for the DJs for sure, she man. Is, she is flavor. Female, female MC conscious and just all around dope, man. She can, she can kill it. Yo, Ty, send my man Zaz your stuff so he can get it on 40 DJs radio. He has an awesome network of DJs. He'll make sure you, you get your stuff, get played and all that. Just like me. <laughs> you know, there we go. Yes, there you oh, go, yeah. man. And my, my wife just jumped in the chat. She said she wants a 40 DJs um, shirt. <laughs> oh, man, you got to look out for sure, man. I'm going to look out for y'all, man, for sure. You know what I mean? <laughs> We'll stay in contact, though, yo, brother, for sure, man. I will. Once again, yo, how can we reach you right now as far as, like, the um, the platforms right now? You're on Instagram, of course. So yeah. where else can we find you at? You can find me on Twitter, on um, on Facebook, Z-I-Z -Z underscore y'all, Y-A-L-L. -L. Yeah, man, get on it. I'm on all the – across the board is Z-I-Z -Z underscore Y-A-L-L. -L. Okay. And once again, you guys can also check him out. Well, not check him, but basically he's broadcasting through for the DJs radio on Spotify. You can check him out right there as well. And look out for all his upcoming projects that we were just talking about. Crazy dope. Um, and once again, that DJ Glip Styles, Zaz on um, mixtape. Glip Styles. That, you got you to get into that one right there, right there. Yo, this is DJ Chris G, straight from the Underground 2.0. This is the live podcast right here. And we're going to go ahead. We, in fact, since um, he gave me, for the rest of the podcast listeners, I'm going to go ahead and play these exclusive we were talking about. So we're going to unleash those on you, put them out there so you guys can hear what we're talking about, play a little bit of the mixtape, and we'll call it the night. All right, y'all? Yes. All the people that's watching us live, yo, we out. All right, thanks for listening. We yeah. get it to you. Ty Phoenix, I'll talk to you soon. Peace. All right. Peace and love, man. Peace, Peace and love. Man. Peace to eyes, yo. Peace out, my love. Chat to Big French. Yes, peace, French.